This is San Diego News Daily. Hey there, I'm Stephen Luke. Let's get right into some of the top local stories. We're following an award winning South Bay teacher arrested earlier this week on child sex abuse charges has now been arrested again. Jacqueline Mott now facing 14 new charges, including possession of child pornography. Now, of course, what started all of this, a parent suspecting her 13 year old child possibly having this inappropriate relationship with a former teacher. NBC7 talking with some siblings of Ma's former students getting their response after her first arrest. I was speechless. I, I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, damn, I, I didn't know it was going to happen, you know, here. Or Despite the new allegations, the National School District Superintendent says there is still just one confirmed student connected to the case. Ma being held without bail right now and will be making her first court appearance on Monday. We are learning more about an incident out of El Cajon where deputies shot at a driver who they say tried to ram him with this truck you see right here. The suspect now in the hospital with gunshot wounds to his legs and will be booked on several felony charges. Here's NBC7's Nicole Gomez with the latest. Well, this is where it all started. Investigators have been out here all morning. This residential street blocked off to traffic. And because this was a deputy shooting, the San Diego Homicide Unit will now be the outside agency in charge. This morning, detectives going through evidence of what unfolded last night on Oro Street near Persimmon. Around 1030, San Diego police say a five year veteran deputy out of the Lakeside Division located a parked Toyota Tacoma that had been stolen out of Alpine earlier that day. He called for canine backup. They waited 90 minutes and decided to impound it. But once they got closer to the car, they saw a man in the driver's seat and ordered him to come out. At the same time, another man walked to the truck as well. That's when the driver backed up, hit a parked car, then sped forward and hit the patrol car. The deputy in fear for his safety and the fear of safety of his, the additional canine deputy and the pedestrian there, that was there ended up firing multiple rounds at the suspect vehicle, um, striking the suspect at least two times in the legs. The driver continued on and led the deputies on a brief chase when he crashed and rolled his truck near Greenfield and second, then took off running into someone's backyard shed. My mother in law came in saying, Hey, I hear some noise. And I'm hearing cop cars coming in back and forth back and forth and the helicopter's not moving around and so she goes by the window and checks it out because our neighbor's dog's going crazy as well and uh she says she sees a guy hop over the fence and like crouch down and put his hoodie on and after that we immediately call 911. the 25 year old man is now recovering at the hospital then he'll be booked on multiple charges including auto theft assault with a deadly weapon and felony evading Reporting in El Cajon, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. Border Patrol agents may have saved an infant from a suspected child trafficker. They discovered this baby actually when they stopped a man driving a car at that San Clemente checkpoint to the north of us last Friday. Agents questioning the driver who reportedly claimed he picked up the infant in Otay Mesa. He didn't know the child's name or where he was taking the child. And there's still many other questions who he is, what connections he has to his child. If he's not a relative, you know, we want to figure out, you know, how did he get this child? Whose child is it? How did he pick this child up in Otay Mesa? Who gave him the child? We don't usually have fingerprints for a baby yet, you know, six months old. So it's a matter of the investigation as it goes on. Of course, we want to find the family or the correct guardians for the child. Meantime, groups working to stop the trafficking of children say a case like this is unusual, but not new. Child Protective Services taking the baby into their custody. Brooke Martell joining us now with a look at your first alert forecast. We have a cooler afternoon on tap, but we also have these rain chances making a return to San Diego for your Friday. We're looking at upper 50s to low 60s along the coast today. Similar temperatures over the inland valleys over your mountains. We're right around the 40s and 50s today, 70s for the desert region. Another thing to make note of, we have a wind advisory going into effect at 6 p.m. over the mountains. We're looking at wind gusts that could actually get up to 65 miles per hour. That advisory lasts till tomorrow morning. Parking spots disappearing from Balboa Park, all in an effort to help cyclists, but some drivers say it's going to cause a big inconvenience. We'll tell you what's happening. Plus, this smart guy right here, the San Diego Spelling Bee Championship returning in person yesterday, and uh, San Diego has a familiar face leading the charge.
You can get a weather report anywhere, but an accurate forecast, that's another story. Only one team in San Diego is certified the most accurate. NBC7's First Alert Weather. What does that mean for you? Helping you plan your day with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast of the changing temperatures. And knowing the exact time when rain will move into your neighborhood so you can prepare. The team using the technology to deliver the most accurate forecast. NBC7's First Alert Weather is coverage you count on. This is San Diego News Daily. Welcome back. Stephen Luke here with a look at some of the stories we're following for you today. Parking on your next trip to Valpolo Park could be a little bit more of a hassle. They're removing a number of parking spots to make it easier for cyclists to use the park. The Park Boulevard project cutting down these parking spots from 300 to 67 to make bike lanes as part of the city's climate action plan. Cyclists say they know there's a trade off, but they think it'll be worth it in the long run. We're creating a place better access for buses, better, uh, certainly a safer, more connected access for bicyclists to access the park. And that's what needs to happen. I'm concerned. Yeah. yeah, there's never enough parking here as it is. If you're used to parking along Park Boulevard, the city recommends the 1600 spaces available at Inspiration Point about a half mile away and taking the shuttle service to other points around the park. The Fleet Science Center in Balboa Park is kicking off roughly a month long celebration today, marking its 50th anniversary. The museum opening in 1973, named after Major Reuben H. Fleet, who we just saw a pioneer in American aviation. F uh, Fleet was in charge of the U.S. Airmail Service when it first launched. After his Army career, he got involved in aircraft manufacturing. For 50 years, the museum has welcomed millions of visitors and hosted hundreds of exhibits and events. So here's the uh, here's the takeaway for you to celebrate the anniversary. The fleet's throwing it back to 1973 with their pricing. Just like when it opened, tickets will cost you two dollars and fifty cents. That's today through Monday. If you are looking for something else fun to do this weekend with family and friends, you can check out the Cherry Blossom Festival in Balboa Park. It's taking place at the Japanese Friendship Garden starting today, goes through Sunday. They're going to have a number of activities, food vendors, craft vendors, and performances. Kids six and under are free, and adult tickets can be purchased at the door. We have more info for you right now on NBC7.com. And if you want to get into the St. Patty's Day spirit maybe a little bit early, you can head over to the 41st Annual St. Patrick's Day Parade and Festival, also taking place in Balboa Park. It's going to be busy. Uh, this is tomorrow. Starting at 1030 in the morning is the parade. The festival starts at 9 and then goes till 6. They will have live entertainment, food booths, arts and craft, beer garden, and a kid zone as well. It's $5 for anyone 21 and up and free for 20 and under and any active military. If you're heading to the parade, a number of road closures in the area, so you might want to check that out ahead of time. Brooke Martell will have your first alert forecast as we head into the weekend right after this. Only one team in San Diego is certified most accurate. NBC7's First Alert Weather. What does that mean for you? Helping you plan ahead with our hour-by-hour -hour forecast. And knowing exactly when rain will move in. First Alert Weather is coverage you count on. We have more rain on the way as we head into this afternoon, and it's really going to start near the North Coast region, moving down the coast towards Encinitas, La Jolla, but also inland. And this is the direction it goes really throughout most of the afternoon heading into this evening. You'll notice here on this map that it is a bit spotty and isolated at times, but it could get pretty heavy also in the overnight hours. You can expect this to stick around through about 7 o'clock. Chance for light showers, though, continuing through 9 a.m. on Saturday. San Diego has crowned its 2023 Spelling Bee champ, and he will now represent the county in the Scripps National Spelling Bee. E-X-S-U-F-F-L-A-T-I-O-N, Exaflation. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the smile and the sense of relief for Mahir Konkapaka, a seventh grade student at Mesa Verde Middle School in Poway took on the title for a second year in a row by correctly spelling exaflation. The national spelling B is set for May 30th and it'll run till June 1st. Good luck to you, buddy. As always, more coverage you count on at NBCSanDiego.com.